Hey guys, welcome. MX23.2, XFCE desktop, uh, MX's flagship. So today I'm going to talk about um, some advanced features with your Thunar file manager. Some old tips and some new ones. I'll also uh, touch just uh, briefly on Catfish also. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about shortcuts and just uh, different functions of your file manager. Thunar. I am uh, filming in 1920 by 1080, so adjust your YouTube player accordingly. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my themes and I'll show you the locations of where these things are stored. They were all installed manually. And uh, when you normally install um, mouse cursors, themes or styles or icon sets, you'll more likely find that that area doesn't have a removal key. And I'll show you how to do some cleanup at the same time. <clears throat> so again, welcome. I'm filming in 1920 by 1080. I do recommend full screen. And uh, since this is a Linux video, just wanted to inform you that I'm filming directly from the desktop. So Linux is for any age, but the name of my channel is Linux for Seniors. That's just a watermark, but it actually is going to serve another purpose today. So I'm going to click that because this has another application attached to it. And I'll show that in a minute. So that icon here should be floating above your time and date if you'd like to subscribe. And I do encourage that. This video will be more than 15 minutes. So plan accordingly. Uh, usually subscription works best. That way you can come and watch it at your leisure where you left off last. Okay. If it is missing, go find me on YouTube. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about Thunar. And uh, more importantly, I will first talk about icon sets and stuff and what I'm using. Thunar 418.4 has some nice features to it. So um, this is the general icon. Depending on the theme you're using, it looks like a hammer. <clears throat> so anyways, let me get this uh, theme business out of the way and then I'll show you the folder locations. Now when you normally add something or change, you're in appearance. Okay, you're doing your style thing and you'll select something. So I'm using MX Comfort. I also have Sweet Ambar Blue installed, which I did not install using that key. Also, when you install something manually using this, there's no removal here. So it's a good idea to be familiar with your file manager. And I'll show you all the folder locations today. I'm using a Futura icon set, which is also non-standard. And I did not use the add key. And I'll show you where that location is. The other thing is the window manager, I'm using Sweet Ambar Blue. As you noticed, I wasn't using that for style, but I'm using that for a window manager and it produces these bright color icons. And I'm going to show you one of the reasons that I like to, to demo stuff like this. It's not because they're nice and cutesy looking. It's because they also will have a grayed out function and this will tell me immediately which is the current open window if you're doing multiple windows on your desktop. Just be aware that this is window manager. Okay. But this is going to be installed in the, in one folder for not only style, but also window manager. In here also, you do have mouse themes, mouse and touchpad or mouse themes. And uh, I'm using this one today. Now your system is also smart enough to look in two different locations. As with any XFCE desktop, it looks for two different locations for mouse cursors. One is the logged in user Jack today, and the other one comes from a different location. It's USR share icons. I will show you where that location is. That's where these are stored. But when you add manually manual mouse cursors, there's no add key in here. You would normally go up to here and maybe use one of these ads in here to add your mouse cursors. Okay. And if it doesn't install properly, uh, that's where we're going to check a folder out to see if you have any scattered files around because that does happen occasionally. I'm not going to use anything fancy today. I have other ones though, but I'm just going to use that one. This one is resizable. This one is not. This one is very tiny. You can barely see it against the blue. 
Okay, but I'm going to show you the folder locations on these things. All right, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about your file manager as far as general features. I have one thing turned on that normally is not here, and that's split pane or split view. One pane, two panes. That's why I call it that. Just a different name for it. Split view. Under here, split view is F3. You can now turn it off manually. So if you don't have that icon, then you can go to view to uh, configure toolbar and turn that on. That normally is not on, by the way. So while I'm in here, there are some options for you. So let's talk a little bit about basics first, and then we'll continue. I'm going to change the desktop background because uh, this is black against black, so I will use blue just so you can see the top of the box. So let's talk about basics before we get going into some of the more advanced settings. So some of my subscribers have seen this a hundred times and they're probably getting tired of this, but more importantly, I never know when I have a new viewer, so just be patient. So we have the, obviously the standard close, the uh, minimize, maximize, and minimize button, and then the roll up. Okay, what a lot of people don't know is you can double click on these things, the imaginary line across here. You can also click and hold the box. You can drag it around, but you can also pull it straight up in the air and let go of it, and that'll go full screen. And then you can click and drag it down. Click and drag it down. I'm using a tower computer, fairly standard wireless keyboard, fairly standard computer mouse with a scroll wheel. That scroll wheel is going to come in handy for lots of things. I'm not using a laptop. So when I mention function keys like F1 through 12, sometimes on your laptops you may have to press another FN key and then like an F9 or an F10. So let me press an F9 here on my keyboard and let you see what it does. It makes the side pane disappear. The side pane, F9, also has two modes depending on what you're doing. So if you hit Control E as an echo, hold down the Control key and hit E, you can flip that to that cycle there or you can hit Control B as in boy. If you are not too, uh, if you don't remember those, go to view, go to side pane, control B, control E, shortcuts and tree. So if you're in tree mode and you decide to go edit preferences, side pane, and you decide to change the icon size to jumbo, nothing happens. Why is that? Because you're in the wrong mode. So if I were to cycle that to control B, all of a sudden jumbo icons appear out of nowhere. Because that box has two settings, control B off, control E. All right, so, but unfortunately what I did though, I pushed everything over. There's an imaginary line right here. But let's first correct this. So under preferences, just be aware, this is the shortcut pane, this is the tree pane. They are different. So if I wanted to increase those, I would be doing it here. Now you can see those turn a little jumbo. Or dinky, is what I call that size. I'm going to put both of these back to 32 if you don't mind. I think we're comfortable with those. So control B as in boy, or control E your choice and you can see the arrows on there all right now I need to fix this problem here because I just pushed everything over so just grab a hold of this imaginary line uh, depending on the theme you're using you may see a line in here all right I'll push this over a little bit farther and that should be plenty now you notice that I have a folder here that normally you don't have if you've ever operated MX for a while this is not here so what I'm going to do is remove that because that's a shortcut. So if you have a favorite folder and you want to dump it into the, well, the tree here, um, I want to pick the same one, the script folder. Now when I click it and I'm going to drag it toward this area, there'll be either one line or two lines. Be careful with the two lines. Also when you drop it, if the folder disappear, immediately hit Control Z as in zebra. That does an undo. 
It happens occasionally. All right, so I will put this in between pictures and videos. If I do it this way, it's got two lines. That's a no-no. You probably don't want to do that, in other words. Okay, I would just drop it right there. That would be the best option. Now, this will be my favorite folder, maybe. Whatever yours is, I just happened to pick a script folder. And hopefully, maybe you've seen some of my other videos on scripts. But anyways, let's move along. So um, resizing icons on the fly is pretty simple to do. Hold down the control key while scrolling, OK? And this, again, is done through this edit box here. All right, also make mention of this. I don't like single click on any file manager on any Linux distro, and I've been around for many years. I've seen some um, single click actions in your file manager that are undesirable effects. So I prefer double click. I also prefer double click on the, on the desktop because I sometimes uh, create launchers and script files that I prefer to have double clicks because of the actions they take, like shutting down the system, for instance. I don't want a single click for that. So anyways, a lot of Linux distros are adopting double click, but not all, FYI. Also, if you are the type of person that writes scripts, be very careful with that. My suggestion is to leave that off. Yes, it's convenient for you, but then again, it also presents possibly, possibly a security risk. Anyways, let's move along now. So let's talk about a search feature before we get into selections of files, dividing the screen up and all that good stuff. Standard search. What's another keyboard command for doing a search? It's control F as in Frank. So if I just type in JPGs, it starts looking for JPEGs. And of course, you can hold down your control key to resize. So you can see I got a large selection of JPEGs. Since I have double click turned on, I need to double click to open this. If you need to edit the image, for instance, then use different tools for that. I would. Uh, GIMP is one of my favorites, and it's like Photoshop. But this is for image viewing. You're just viewing the image. Hold on your control key while scrolling, and you can zoom in on, on the butterfly or whatever you're trying to zoom in on, if you're trying to do that in a hurry. All right, so search feature. <clears throat> So I was just looking for MP3s. So what if you want to search within, um, like I will search for the word fat, and you're going to think, huh? All right, so my wife had a cute recipe for cabbage soup. It's a fat burning recipe. So that's why I'm using the word fat. So I have two documents somewhere inside of my um, Jack's, uh, just a made up name. Uh, somewhere in Jack's folder are two documents that contain that word fat in it, and it's a text document. And it found nothing. So what I can use is a different tool for that. And I can also imp import that tool or have a shortcut of it inside of Thunar. But I'm going to first show you that this function is serving a dual icon today. Not only is it there to remind you to subscribe to Linux for Seniors, but I'm going to double click and you can see that it opens Catfish. All right, so what is catfish? Catfish is a file search. So I'm going to type in fat in here and hit enter. And it found two files because I told it to search file contents. So beware, click the dots, and then maybe click that. So I'm going to open up a text that has the word fat burning soup in it, hence the keyword fat. I know it's lowercase and that's uppercase. No big deal. This is cabbage.txt, which is actually the same text file with a different name on it. Just having a little fun, folks. It's got the word fat in it. So again, this is catfish. Now, if you don't want to do this with your Thunar file manager, you can certainly run it manually, because I'm going to show you that shortcut in a second. So open up your MX menu and type in CAT, and you'll find catfish file search. And open it this way. Now, in your Thunar file manager, you'll have to activate a shortcut for it. In here, under Edit, under Configure Custom Actions, under Find Files, you will have that already ready to go, except you have to activate it. Find Files here, double-click. 
you will see catfish path in here and the command. What you won't see is the keyboard shortcut, which I assigned to Shift F. It just is something that I wasn't using on my keyboard. So I am just going to assign it Shift F. So press the key combination. I would, I would use two keys if I were you. Okay, so I'm using Shift F. So when I do that and I hit Shift F in here, it opens up Catfish without me having to go look for it in the menu. Then I can do a quick search. Okay, so that's just one item. There are many ways of doing this, but I'm just showing you a quick shortcut. All right, so let's talk a little bit about file selections. I think some of us may not be aware of all the options we have when it comes down to copying, pasting, cutting files. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the standard shortcuts that are not only available here on this Linux distro, but also in Microsoft Windows if you're a dual boot user. Control X, Control C, Control V, Control A are also common on Microsoft Windows. Cut, copy, paste, and select all. So Control A selects everything. And if I click in here, it deselects. Again, I'm using a standard, standard computer, mouse, scroll wheel, and standard wireless keyboard and a tower computer. Okay, not a laptop, no touchpad. I can also drag up and over and as many as I want and deselect. If you come in from the side, you can go in both directions, but it does deselect them if you go in the other direction. If I decided to take part of this row, I could drag across, back it up to the images I don't want, and then let go of my mouse and then hold down the control key and also select some extra images. And that becomes part of the group for me to right click and copy or cut or control X or control C. You can also hold the control key down and select another folder, for instance, or a directory, as we call them in Linux. So resizing the icons on the fly. Making it more comfortable for you. You can come in at an angle like that. You can hold down the control key and do this in multiple layers. There are many ways to manipulate files. There's also many ways to manipulate the screen. I have something turned on here that's normally not on. And what is this one good for? USB stick on this side, my internal hard drive on this side, and this one here is my pictures folder or documents. Drag and drop. Split view F3. This icon normally is not here, so go in your view menu and configure your toolbar if you want that tool, along with others. Lots of toys in here. I think this one's a nice one. So this bar is movable. So whether I go full screen, I can grab a hold of this thing, and then these are resizable independently. Holding down the control key while scrolling. Okay. So file manipulation is uh, nothing new, but more importantly, just some extra tips for you today. So. If I click in this screen here, I'll do stick, which is empty, USB stick. And then uh, this is my documents folder. And if I wanted to make some quick copies over here, I can do it uh, this way, grab a hold of these two. And then I can uh, maybe, if I do that, now that since I already have that one, what is it gonna say? It's gonna complain, okay, that one of them is already there. So your choice to replace or skip. Okay. While this is still in here, we can switch this side of the house into another device. So this is stick and this is my internal demo drive. And I could do the same thing. I'm just going to get rid of, these are all demo files, so I can just get rid of that. So if I just want the one file, I can certainly do that. And as I click and drag, it's a copy process because I'm going from device to device or internal folders to a device is always a copy process, whether you drag a directory or a folder, 
or a file. However, if you decide, um, let's go with the complete set here and it'll complain that it's got something here. I'll just do a replace because they're just demo files. And uh, I'm going to click this, click this folder over to downloads for a second. And again, these are all demo files. So I'm going to get rid of those. And uh, we're going to do this uh, a little differently. So I'm going to click um, these two with dragging them up. Hold down the control key, click, click, and then drag all of those over here. Um, then I'm going to go to the music folder. I actually, sorry, let me go with um, downloads on this side and then click over here and do music. Now, this is the music folder over here and this is my downloads. It could be any folder is what I'm getting at. Whenever you drag files from your internal folders to another internal folder, it is not a copy process. It is a move. It is a cutting paste example of that would be that okay keep in mind they're they're independently resizable so all i did was i cut this a uh, jpeg out and went from here to there i'll move it back i'm not doing anything special other than clicking and dragging there's different combinations yes but all i'm doing is doing a simple drag okay so just a quick demo of that so i'll leave these in the downloads and I'll use F3 to get out of this mode. All right. We can also talk about um, your hidden files and folders. And then I'll talk about dual windows when it comes down to uh, transferring files. So let's talk a little bit about this uh, Control H, show hidden. It's a very common command with most modern Linux file managers. Okay, whether you click that or just use Control H, that's all up to you. So I'm going to make this tiny. Well, not that tiny, but roughly that size, Control H, and talk about folder locations. Not only this mouse cursor, but your icon set, the one I'm using, and some of the other stuff. So anything that starts with a period, or a dot as I call it, is a hidden file or folder. So period icons is where this mouse cursor is located, this one right here. I also have icon sets in here under the same folder. There's another one also called dot themes or period themes that contains sweet ambar blue dark, the window manager that I'm currently using. Now you know where that's stored. All right, so let me talk about where some of these things are and in relationship of when you do a manual install on these things. So you, uh, Freshly installed MX, you download it. Uh, maybe you have watched some of my videos over the years, and uh, maybe you went onto my YouTube site and go find a website that ends with look.org. There are two of them, and you found some extra themes, styles, icon sets, mouse cursors. You downloaded them, they're sitting in your download folder. I have some samples for you today. Let me get rid of this other stuff. So they're not that confusing to you. That's a mouse cursor, mouse cursor, mouse cursor. All of these are mouse cursors. All right, this just happens to be the files that I have. Let me borrow some over here from a theme. Uh, this is candy icons. I'll just do a copy of that and I'll paste it in here. All these files came from xfce-look.org. All right, that's the icon set and it's currently installed right now. So if you are doing the general thing like um, from here, you are wanting that icon set and uh, you know you hit add. You go look for that in your download folder and there's candy icons and you hit open. If it successfully installs it, you'll see it in your menu. At the same time, what it does is it actually looks for that folder, the period icons folder. If the period icons folder is not there, it creates it automatically. That's very common with a lot of Linux distros. I also create this folder manually. Period icons, dot icons. Also this folder, period themes or dot themes. Normally when you add themes like this sweet ambar blue, it lands in this folder. I do this manually. 
When you are wanting to get rid of that, there is no removal here though. When you are wanting to get rid of this candy icons, and that's what they look like if you're curious, there's no removal key here. I'll switch back to Futura. So how do you get rid of this stuff? Well, you need to know where they're located. Well, in this case, it's in period icons. If I wanted to get rid of candy, I would just click that and hit delete. It's gone. How do I verify that? Well, open up your settings. There's no candy icons in here. It's missing. There's another one that's made by the same developer that's called Sweet, but there's no candy icons. I'll switch back to future. But that doesn't mean I'm sunk if I change my mind. If I change my mind, I go into my trash and I right click and then do a restore. Now it's back online. All I need to do is back out the screen and come back in. Candy icons is back online. So it helps when you know these locations because again, there's no removal key here. So, you know, a lot of people are reluctant to add stuff because they don't know how to get rid of it. Well, I'm just showing you how to get rid of it because they're currently stored right here. Icon set, mouse cursor, mouse cursor, mouse cursor, mouse cursor, icon set. Mouse cursor, mouse cursor, icon set. Yes, they both reside in the same directory or same folder. And then we have, of course, the sweet and bar blue, which is a style or a theme. Period themes, period icons, again, gets generated if you don't have them. So if I were getting rid of stuff, um, and the same thing can go with mouse cursors. Again, there are no removals or ads. You can certainly add a mouse cursor theme using this button or this button if it successfully installs from here. But if it doesn't install from there successfully, and I'll give you an example, I'll uh, delete green and reinstall it. So let me get rid of that one, trash can. So first of all, we're going to verify that that is gone by using, uh, do I have two of these? I do have two of these. So let me close all them and reopen them up. Sorry, there was too many boxes open. All right, so first of all, the only one that says cappuccino, mocha yellow, the green is gone. So I'm going to manually install it, okay? Or should I try to install it through the system? Well, let's try the system way. Appearance, Add, Downloads, Cappuccino Green, Open. You'll not see anything in here, except you just need to go downstairs and go find your mouse and touchpad and then check it. And it did install properly. It's not, it's also in here. I already knew it installed properly because I could see it in the background. But more importantly, that is that one. I'm sorry, this one, pardon me. Now, if you see scattered files inside of your period icons folder, that means something went wrong. That's one of the reasons I like to make mention of troubleshooting at the same time when I'm doing this. These should be in nice containers. They should be in nice folders, nice directories. The same thing goes with your themes. They should not be scattered files in here. They should all be in nice containers. If the theme doesn't work, then just delete it. If you hit the delete, it moves it into the trash and you change your mind, it restores it back to where it was. So that's a nice way of looking at your file manager for this kind of stuff. All right, control H to turn that off. We're gonna reduce this box. Some people prefer this method and some not so much. Control N is in Nancy, makes two boxes. One of the reasons that I picked this window manager is you can clearly see these brightly colored icons and these are grayed out. USB stick over here, now it lit up. This is grayed out. So this is the active screen. And as soon as I click here, this is the active screen. So this way you know where you're at if you're transferring data back and forth. And keep in mind, you can go with USB stick on this side, internal drive or the booted in drive and drag and drop or cut and paste. 
or control C, control V. All these are different key combinations. Now I'm going to drag this window or take a hold of it and bounce it off the sidewall here and then do the same thing with this one on the, on the center of this box. And do that one more time. There we go. Now you got half. Okay, and it doesn't matter what I'm doing here. I can resize the icons on the fly, do the drag and drop. Okay, it's pretty simple. All I'm doing is pulling that down. So pull it up, pull it down, pull it down, pull it up. Okay, then you can, of course, right click and resize the box to your heart's content. All right, so quick recap here. Again, Jack is just a made up name. Resizing icons on the fly, scroll, scroll wheel on the computer mouse. Shortcuts, drag the thing over to here. Just remember one line, not two. And if it doesn't, if it clears out your folder, immediately look at it and hit Control Z. So it'll undo it. Okay. Your uh, preferences for your side panes are there for the shortcut and the icon sides. Don't forget the keyboard shortcuts. F9 to make it disappear. Control B as in boy and Control E as an echo. Okay. While I'm in here, you can do the configure custom actions, find files, and assign the catfish a keyboard shortcut if you like. Other than that, use the standard search feature. Um, select, okay, your, your keyboard shortcuts for the general stuff are all in here. Okay, don't forget about the uh, behavior also and uh, the toolbar. F3 for the split view. You can also use new tab, which is this way. This is more confusing with some people. I'm just showing you the example of that. And uh, where are we at? 32 minutes. And uh, don't forget about the help. So again, this has all been about Thunar today. Hopefully um, some of this will help you out. You can also see the free space at the bottom and uh, your home folder, file system, root, and uh, USR, share, icons folder, which is right here. This is owned by root, by the way. So just gonna make mention of this. This is where the other mouse cursors are stored, for instance, along with lots of other things. So if I were to just give you the example of a couple of them, the DMZ white is this one right here. The DMZ black is this one right here. Keep in mind, you have to have root permissions to add and remove anything. This icon may look familiar to you. You normally see it on your panel when you've got updates. So if you are playing in here, be very careful. And this does require root mode to get in here and your file manager Thunar has the capability of doing that. There's your warning box. Now you're in dangerous territory. So I will always caution people to go into root mode and be careful wherever you are, especially in your file system. You can destroy your system really quick if you don't know what you're doing. But more importantly, you can also open up a uh, terminal here too. Okay, so the terminal commands, I don't care what you're doing with it. Um, you can do a du for instance, or sorry. It would help if I type the right things. Um, whatever commands that you're dumping in here, I'm just gonna do an exit, are all stored here in uh, bash history. Period bash history is where those commands are stored. So if I clear the field out and save this file, if you're just curious of where those are stored, I'll do a couple of more commands. Uh, well, actually, before I do that, it's blank, right? So far, so good. The other day, I wrote an application that uh, uses born again shell to guess people's birthday day of the week if you haven't caught that one that was kind of cute or maybe not 
I'll just do a couple more of these. I'll do a top command also and hit control C and then type in exit. So all that stuff just got stored right here. You can see all the commands right there. If I leave this box open and I open up terminal and perform one more command and uh, I'll just type in um, ls um, and I try to close this box, this will go red. And the reason for that is because it's not showing all the commands. So now I'll close and reopen and you'll see the word ls at the bottom. All right, just in case you needed to know where they're stored. And this file is actually editable. So it also stores bad commands. So if you were to type in gibberish and hit enter, it stores that. You'll see that in a second. Yeah, so if I needed to uh, clean up my bash history, I would just do that. And if I didn't like uh, this part, I would do that and hit delete and I can save that file. And when I reopen up terminal and type in history, which will have line numbers, those uh, bogus commands won't be in there. And I removed the top also. Okay, so that does match with this over here. With the exception of the word history, because that I haven't closed this box yet. Now it goes red and I'll have the word history at the bottom. Thank you for watching.